In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, we give you glory and praise, we bless your name, we exalt you, we adore you, we magnify you, we give you praise, be thou exalted in Jesus' precious name. In this special service, God will visit you mightily in the mighty name of Jesus. Your heavens will be open in the mighty name of Jesus, and showers of blessing will become your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Jam your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Please be seated in God's presence. Praise God. I want to appreciate God for the privilege to be the one to serve us with God's word in this meeting. I want to appreciate my father, my mentor, my life coach, my teacher for this wonderful opportunity. I believe it will not be abused in the mighty name of Jesus. My elder brothers in the faith and everyone that will hear God's word today. I believe God's word will nourish and transform your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, we hand over this session into your hand. We ask with Spirit of God that you speak to your people yourself in the mighty name of Jesus. Give everyone understanding of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Cause the right words to flow through my mouth in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the grace back in this commission salvation ministries. Our Father, the Vyomia, answer to me now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be harvest of souls. And everyone will live rejoicing in Jesus' precious name. Praise God. Hallelujah. In Psalm 65 verse 11, the Bible says, Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and thy paths drops fatness. I stand under the grace back in the commission of Father Dibime. I decree this December will be the best of months to you in the mighty name of Jesus. All that you have been denied from January till November will manifest in December in the mighty name of Jesus. Every secret tear you have shared will turn to an open laughter in the mighty name of Jesus. The God of heaven will crown your effort with his goodness. Your paths will drop with fatness. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will testify in Jesus' precious name. Amen. The title of the message today is Keep Your Hope Alive. Keep your hope alive keep your hope alive hear this truth our god is a god of hope and our god wants us to have hope our god is a god of hope and god wants us to have hope in the book of romans chapter 15 and verse 13 the bible says now the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that he may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. So our God is a God of hope and God wants us to have hope. The truth is that we have been begotten to a living hope. We have been begotten to a living hope. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Praise God. For the fact that God rose Jesus from the dead after three days is an indication that somebody hearing my voice will rise today in a mighty name of Jesus. No matter how seemingly impossible that situation has been, as you exercise hope in today's service, God will change your story in a mighty name of Jesus. Now, Jesus had hope before his death. He had hope that the Holy Spirit will raise him up. You will be raised up today in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, hope is the anchor to our souls. Hope is the anchor to our souls. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18 to 19. Hope is the anchor to our souls. Hebrews 6, verse 18 to 19. The Bible said that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entered into that within the veil. I decree somebody's hope today will become your anchor in a mighty name of Jesus. Now, what is hope? What is hope? Hope is the expectation of good things to come. Papa said, hope is the expectation of good things to come. 
It is a confident expectation that something desired will of a certainty come true or happen. It is a confident expectation that something desired will of a certainty come true or happen. Papa said hope is a living force that keeps you pressing on until your desire is attained. Hope is a living force that keeps you pressing on until your desire is attained. Papa's testimony of this commission, when Papa started this ministry, he told share with us that he was invited to do epilogue and prologue, opening prayer and closing prayer in a TV station. But from that time, even when the ministry was not looking like it was going to blossom, he had hope of a glorious ministry. And he refused that offer because he had hope. Am I talking to us? It was the things that he has hoped for from God's word that we are seeing manifesting in salvation ministries today. Praise God. I believe your expectations will also become a reality in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, hope maketh not ashamed. Your hope will become a reality in today's meeting in the mighty name of Jesus. Hope is a strong conceived picture of the possibility of God's word becoming real concerning the colorful picture you are to arrive at. I said hope is a strong conceived picture of the possibility of God's word becoming real concerning the colorful picture you are to arrive at. In the book of Psalm 42 and verse 5, the Bible says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. He said, Hope thou in what? God, I shall yet praise him. I believe somebody's hope will turn into joy in the mighty name of Jesus. As you have hope today, your joy will be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. Abraham, for example, had hope against all logical reasoning that what God has spoken to him will come to pass. Abraham had hope against all logical reasoning that what God has spoken will come to pass. Romans chapter 4 verses 17 to 18. Romans 4 17 to 18. The Bible says, as it is written... I have made it the father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were. Verse 18, the Bible says, Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. God spoke to Abraham. If you read the story in Genesis chapter 18 there about from verse 10 to 14. God spoke to Abraham. Even Sarah laughed when God spoke. She said, will I have pleasure again of a man? To her, it was a close case because she had passed menopause. She had passed papa pause. There was no life in their body. Abraham's body was dead. Sarah's body was also dead. There was no life. But Abraham held on to God's word. And was praising God. The Bible says he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He had hope that the word God has spoken will come to pass. So that hope, based on the hope, he began to praise God and to exalt God. And God did what God said he will do. I believe as you keep your hope alive, God's promises concerning you will come to pass in our mighty name of Jesus. No matter the situation you are going through now, Keep your hope alive because God cannot fail. And God will not fail you in the mighty name of Jesus. Abraham's situation was hopeless. But God intervened. Praise God. God will intervene concerning your situation in the mighty name of Jesus. Maybe they've given you a negative report. They've told you that your tissues are dead. Your organs are dead. Your body parts are dead. As you have hope in God's word, life will surge into them in the mighty name of Jesus. They've told you the marriage will not work. Your admission will not work. They've given you plenty, plenty reasons why that situation will not work. As you engage hope in today's service, every situation will turn around in the mighty name of Jesus. Papa said hope is likened to a pregnancy that goes through the gestation period of nine months after which delivery takes place. Even when God has promised you fruitfulness, 
you must go through the nine months period. Am I talking to us? Yes, when the woman becomes pregnant, she must go through nine months waiting period before delivery. I believe all that God has spoken to you, exercise hope, all will come to pass in a mighty name of Jesus. Now, the truth is that God cannot do anything without you having hope for it. God cannot do anything without you having hope for it. God cannot do anything without you having hope for it. I remember when I was a young boy several years ago. Pastor Samson will remember the story. And when we come back from school, when we were coming from school, we'll be praying for us to meet something to eat at home. Sometimes we even pray, let there be at least gari and granite to flow. Praise God. And because of the way it was that time, we didn't use to peel the granite. We believe that when you add the shell, uh, it will make more sense. Because the shell will occupy some space. And then sometimes we will come back, we, stay, we are staying at the Mekuku Street, we will come back from school, and then once we just look at the table, there's nothing. The next thing is to trek. We will trek from somewhere to close to Fruit Garden. You know where Fruit Garden is. My mom was managing one hotel close to Fruit Garden. So when we get to the place, we will not trek from after school, we will trek to the place. Then when we trek, they will not give you different, different food. That is, not that will, they will buy food for us, or she will give us some of the food she's cooking. The food that the guests remain, they will not give us the food. They will put rice, white rice one side, uh, uh, jollof rice one side, uh, fried rice one side. They will not pack the food and give to us. We will not eat the food and trek again back to the house. But that period, that thing was going on. One day we were going, I told him, I said, I will feed people one day. I had hope. I didn't know how it was going to happen. I just told him, I said, one day I will feed, uh, because the stress was plenty. Before you get to the house again, you are hungry. Just that. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Yes, yeah, so the consolation you have is that you, you know that you ate food when you went there. But before you come back to the house, you are already hungry again. The whole food that you ate has uh, dissolved. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So God will not do anything for you without you having hope. Am I talking to us? Yes, you want God to intervene in your situation, to settle you, give you married life partner. You will have hope in God's word. Am I talking to us? You want God to heal you from that sickness. You will have hope in God's word. And as you have hope today, God will intervene in the mighty name of Jesus. A wise man said, hope is the companion of power and the mother of success for whoso hopes strongly has within him the gift of success. He said, hope is the companion of power and the mother of success for whoso hopes strongly has within him the gift of success. So no matter your circumstance, no matter your background, you can succeed if you have hope. Am I talking to us? And I believe somebody will succeed in the mighty name of Jesus. Papa said, whatever steals your hope has stolen your future. Whatever steals your hope has stolen your future. And a man that is hopeless has made himself helpless. None of us will be helpless in the mighty name of Jesus. The truth is that your faith needs hope to make it a reality. Your faith needs hope to make it a reality. Hope is a virtue that gives value to your faith. Hope is a virtue that gives value to your faith. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Hope is a virtue that gives value to your faith. Hebrews 11 verse 1, the Bible said, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of the things that you have hoped for. So faith will give substance to your hope. Am I talking to us? Yes, Papa said faith becomes substantial when hope is sustained. Faith becomes substantial when hope is sustained. Faith becomes substantial when hope is sustained. It is what you have hoped for that your faith will bring to manifestation. It is what you have hoped for that your faith will bring to what? Manifestation. It is what you have hoped for your faith will bring to manifestation. Hear this truth. There is no hopeless situation as long as you don't give up. Am I talking to us? 
There's no hopeless situation as long as you don't what? Give up. God is not too slow. Papa has told us several times, if God created the whole world in six days and is still managing it till now, God cannot mismanage your small life. Am I talking to us? Yes, there's no situation you are going through that God cannot handle. There's no situation you are going through that is bigger than God. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Have hope. And I believe God will visit you in the mighty name of Jesus. A wise man said there's no hopeless situation but people who have grown hopeless about them. A wise man said there is no hopeless situation but people who have grown hopeless about the situation. No hopeless situation, but people who have grown hopeless about them. Praise God. Some researchers carried out an experiment to find out the effect of, on ho- of, the effect of hope on those going through hardship. So what they did was to get two sets of lab rats. They got two sets of lab rats, and they placed, placed the two sets, one set into a separate tub of water. They left this, the, the rats, they placed into this, a tub of water. They left them there. And after a while, after an hour, they found out that all the rats, the lab rats have drowned. And then the second hand experiment, they placed these uh, lab rats into the tub. And then periodically, they will remove the rats from the tub and put them back again. And they discovered that those ones they were removing and putting back swam for 24 hours. Because they were having hope that whether somebody will come and rescue them again. Praise God. Yes, but the ones they just kept inside the tub drowned within one hour. And the other ones they were removing and putting back swam for 24 hours. Praise God. Please don't give up. God has not given up on you. Am I talking to us? Yes, don't give up. If rats can have hope, Am I talking to us? Yes, so if rats can have hope to swim for 24 hours, please don't give up. God has not given up on you. No matter the difficulty you are facing today, have hope because until you have hope in place, faith cannot deliver. No matter the difficulty you are facing today, have hope because until you have hope in place, faith cannot what? Deliver. Job chapter 14 verse 7 to 9. Job chapter 14, verse 7 to 9, the Bible says, For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. He said, Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stalk thereof die in the ground, he said, Yet through the scent of water, it will board and bring forth balls like a plant. Praise God. Yes, the Bible refers to us as trees of righteousness. So no matter how difficult that situation is, no matter how hopeless that situation may be, the doctors may have given up on you. They may have told you we have done all that we can and there's nothing else to do. That is the place where God will begin. Am I talking to us? Because God specializes in handling impossible cases. God specializes in handling Impossible cases. Jeremiah 32 verse 27. He said, I am the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? He said, is the God of all flesh, including your flesh. And he said, there is nothing that is too hard. That's why I know today, somebody's hope will bring about your desire to turn around in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody's hope will bring about your desire to turn around in the mighty name of Jesus. No matter the doctor's report. Am I talking to us? Yes, no matter the doctor's report, hope will change your story for the better in the mighty name of Jesus. So have hope in God. Have hope in God. Have hope in God. Am I talking to us? When I was in, when I was privileged to be in Woji Satellite Church, um, there was this young man, he's a pastor now, he's a pastor. Let me not use young man in Jesus' name. And he's a pastor. <laughs> Praise God. Yes, the pastor then, he was not a pastor. He used to always come to church. When we came to church, we were three in the church. It would be me, him, uh, me, him, and his wife. They were always coming. And one day I asked the other official, I said, I want to pray with them. What do they need? 
Other officials said um, they are believing God for, a, for the fruit of the womb. They had a child that was eight years old, and then they were believing God for the fruit of the womb. And then they had hope. Oh. They were serving God, expecting God to do something. And believe me, God met them. Am I talking to us? Yes, God met them and their story changed. God will touch you today in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible said, through the scent of water. So as God's word come, God's word will redirect your focus. And I believe your story will change in the mighty name of Jesus. Now the principal source of hope is the word of God. The principal source of hope is God's word. The word of God shows you what you can become rather than showing you what your present situation is. God's word shows you what you can become rather than showing you what your present situation is. The word of God inspires you to see a future rather than explain away your life in your present circumstance. Am I communicating with us? Yes, if you're explaining what is happening now, God's word will inspire you to see a future. Praise God. Now, some reasons to trust God's word. Very quickly, some reasons why we should trust the word of God. Some reasons to trust God's word. Some reasons to trust God's word. Number one, God cannot lie. God cannot lie. Numbers 23 verse 19 say, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So God cannot lie. Whatever God's word has said, have hope on that word, and it will surely come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The second reason why you should trust God's word is that God cannot change. God cannot change. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. He said, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. God cannot change. If you read the book of James chapter 1 and verse 17, the Bible says, In God there is no variableness. He said, Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of light, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So God's nature does not change. God cannot be good sometimes and bad at other times. No, sir. God is constant. Am I talking to us? He cannot change. But he will change your situation today in the mighty name of Jesus. Number three reason why you should trust God's word. God cannot deny himself. God cannot deny himself. God cannot deny himself. Second Timothy 2.13 The Bible says, if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. So what God has said concerning you, God will not deny it. Am I talking to us? Yes, that's why I know it will come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. The next one, God cannot fail you. God cannot fail you. God cannot fail you. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 5. God cannot fail you. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. The Bible says, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. So God will not fail you. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, God will not fail you. Men can fail you. Men can disappoint you. But God does not fail. God does not fail. And he will show up on somebody's behalf today in the mighty name of Jesus. The next reason, God cannot break his promise. God cannot break his promise. God cannot break his promise. Psalm 89 verse 34. God cannot break his promise. Psalm 89 verse 34. The Bible says, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my what? Lips. So God will not break his covenant with you. Am I talking to us? Yes, he has told us in his word, say, you shall serve the Lord your God, and then he will bless your bread and water. He will take sickness away from your midst. The number of your days he will fulfill. And so, believe the promises of God, because you are doing your part, God will do his part. Am I talking to us? Yes, once you are doing your part, God's part is already settled. Praise God. He will not break his promise concerning you in the mighty name of Jesus. Jeremiah 33, verse 20 to 22. The Bible says, Thus said the Lord, 
if ye can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, and that there should be no, there should not be day and night in their season. He said, Then may also my covenant be broken with David, my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne. And with the Levites, the priests, my ministers. He said, And the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured. So will I multiply the seed of David, my servant, and the Levites that minister unto me. Praise God. The next one God's intent and power cannot be stopped. God's intent and his power cannot be stopped. God's intent and power cannot be stopped. Daniel chapter 4 verse 35. God's intent and his power cannot be stopped. Daniel, Daniel chapter 4 verse 35. The Bible says, And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand or say unto him what doest thou he said no one can stay the hand of god they cannot stop the hand of god am i talking to us that is why you know whatever god has spoken to you from his word will surely come to pass in our mighty name of jesus I say God's intent and power concerning your life cannot be stopped. Every word God has declared concerning you that you believe and you have hope in will come to pass in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Number nine, uh, sorry, the number eight. God's word cannot be broken. Okay, don't worry, I removed some from my own note. Just write it. <laughs> Praise God. And because of time, I'm skipping some, so just write the words you can write. The next one, God's word cannot be broken god's word cannot be broken so 119 verse 89 the bible says forever O lord thy word is settled in heaven forever O lord thy word is what settled in heaven john chapter 10 verse 35 the bible says, if he called them gods unto whom the word of god came and the scripture cannot be broken the scriptures cannot be what broken so god's word cannot be what broken and every word he has declared will come to pass in your life in the mighty name of jesus all right very quickly how to keep your hope alive 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 number one always remember that you are connected to god always remember you are connected to god ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4 always remember that you are connected to God, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 4, the Bible says, For to him that is joined to all the living, there is what? Hope. For him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. So as long as you are connected to God, you cannot be hopeless. Am I talking to us? Yes, as long as you have God, you are born again, you cannot be hopeless. I used to feel that the world was against me. And there was one song I used to sing, Me Against the World. Some of you will know the song. I used to sing that song when I was not born again, Me Against the World. I used to rap the song. Uh -huh. You know the song, it's a rap. Some of you know, still remember it. I used to always sing the song because I felt everything was against me. Even those that were smiling with me, they were against me. So I used to sing that song. When people have gone, I, was, I used to be funny. I would make people laugh. My friends, they would laugh because I felt they were feeling what I was feeling. So once they come around me, I want everybody to be laughing because I don't want them to think what I was thinking when I was alone. So I will now begin to crack jokes. Everybody will laugh. But when they've gone, I will now be feeling like the whole world was against me. Everybody hates me. Nobody likes me. You know, that kind of thing. They, it, was, it was becoming, almost becoming depressing. But the moment I gave my life to Christ... All of a sudden, there was this unusual hope from the inside. I didn't know where it came from, but I just knew that everything was going to be all right. Am I talking to us? I know many of you have experienced the same thing. Praise God. Yeah, so once you are born again, you have what? Hope. You know that your tomorrow will be better than your today. Am I talking to us? Because God's word has said your path will shine brighter and what? Brighter. Once you are born again, your path will be adding adding on daily 
basis. And I believe that to become your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Number two way to keep your hope alive, focus on God's word. Focus on God's word. No matter the situation or circumstance, put God's word as a picture of your desired future and your hope will be intact. No matter the situation or circumstance, put God's word as a picture of your desired future and your hope will be intact. I have several frames in my house. I take past quotes when he's preaching for my message notes and then I frame them and one of them I put in my parlor. My future is God's past. So anytime I want to worry about something, I just look at it. My future is God's what? The thing I want to worry about, God has finished it several years ago. Am I talking to us? And so I don't need to worry about anything. If you have watched match before, when they are replaying the match, will you panic? Uh, so God has already finished my life already. True or false? Yes, it's me that has not seen it. And I know that his plans for me, they are plans of good. So I put it where I will see it every day. My future is God's past. God has finished with me. Am I talking to us? Yes, praise God. So don't give up. Two hours is too much. One hour is too what? Am I talking to us? Know why we are preparing your heart today? Papa is coming on Sunday. All of us we know where we went to. Sunday will be a good day. So this today only is to see, prepare, lay foundation for your heart to be set for what will happen on Sunday. Am I talking to us? And because on Sunday, if you don't get miracles, even Satan himself will be angry. <laughs> Satan will say, for what? For what? So me, all this thing, myself, I preach. All this anointing came back for Chilo. You see, have this problem. Kobo Christ will not flog us in Jesus' name. <laughs> Am I talking to us? And so we are setting this one to have hope so that on Sunday, you will come with fresh hope so that uh, all your testimonies will be manifested. Yeah. Am I talking to us? Then number three, remember past testimonies. Remember past what? Testimonies. Remember past testimonies. The things God has done before in the lives of others, in your own life, and then also in the Bible. Remember the testimonies. If God has done it before, he can also do it again. Am I talking to us? If somebody has gone through that situation you are going through, and has come out with testimony, you will also be the next to testify in Jesus' name. Yeah. So remember what God has done for others. When you remember it and thank God, you are positioning yourself to be the next person to testify in that same situation. And I believe somebody will come back with your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Now in conclusion, the strength of your faith is a function of the strength of your hope. The strength of your faith... The strength of your faith is a function of the strength of your hope. The strength of your faith is a function of the strength of your hope, while the strength of your hope is determined by how much strength of the word you have. I said the strength of your faith is a function of the strength of your hope, while the strength of your hope is determined by how much strength of the word you have. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's rise to our feet. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jam your hands together for Jesus. Praise God. That's the end of the short message in Jesus' name. Praise God. But the first uh, way to have hope is to be connected to God. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 4. He says, as many as are joined to the living, there is what? Hope. You cannot have this hope we are talking about until you are born again. This hope can only be found in God and the source is the word of God. So if you are not born again, you cannot have this hope. So everyone, wherever you are, hearing my voice, whether in the physical churches, on the internet, if you, are, you want to have this kind of hope, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and my personal Savior. I believe in my heart that you died for me and you rose again. I am born again. I'm a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me in Jesus' precious name. Praise God. If you pray that prayer, please remain standing while 
Others will take their seats. Praise God. You are welcome to God's family in a mighty name of Jesus. A family of lively stones. You will never know sorrow or shame in a mighty name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please give them brief information. Take their details. And then God bless you in Jesus' name. Those of you online, please check the information on the